One of the biggest challenges in the field of quantum chemistry, the field that I'm in, is extending what we know how to do in molecules to bulk problems, to large things like solids and liquids. There is currently some software to do that, but it's commercial software. Probably the biggest obstacle to more research in the field is a lack of an open source alternative. I'm lucky to have a group of some of the best theorists and coders all gathered together at Princeton, and so if a group's gonna just do it, I think ours is a group, so we just got together to, to do this in one weekend. The way research is done usually, especially in, in a single group like my own group, is we all work on different projects and those might be related, but nonetheless, everyone is doing something distinct. Here we're all working on the same thing, at the same time, the same place, and this is like research sprinting rather than the normal thing would be like research walking. Actually, I originally thought that only four or five people would come, but when I mentioned this, everyone wanted to come. And George, who is one of the organizers of the event, he was up until four last night. It's a pretty motivated crowd, and I think that's typical of all scientists. You know, they love what they do. We're very much on the cusp of two disciplines, and you know, that's an exciting place to be, where you can kind of hopefully look over both shoulders and kind of see interesting things going on and bring them together. Often, no, <laughs> but you know, we'll give it a shot. We've gone through several bags of coffee already, there are snacks we bought, but uh, other than that, I think the reward is seeing the project come together and have the code, have the code working. We are close to getting something which is not, not zero, <laughs> which is already quite a progress because it's a massive project in some sense. I'm a very good coder, so if there's some particular problem which can be solved with the computer, I'm convinced that I can do it. <laughs> I think we, we achieved about 80% of the objectives that we had at the beginning of the project. This kind of collective atmosphere is great for hashing out certain kinds of problems and then other kinds of science really just require you just to sit down for a long period of time and there's no avoiding that. In this sort of group way, you can have your energy recharged by the successes of other people when your own stuff is going slow. Of course this is going to be an ongoing effort, this is not the only hackathon, there will be other ones in the future. Yeah, I mean there's no reason why we shouldn't just um, work, why we shouldn't have the next one at the beach. Yeah, probably that's a good place for the next one.